Hi guys, uh, my name is Adelina Torado. I am currently a senior at SF State, just like many of you about to graduate in a few weeks. Um, this is my video for my thesis for um, my human, sexua human sexuality colloquium class. If you hear my loud ass family in the back screaming and partying, it's because it's Mother's Day and I came down to SoCal, so I'm pretty sure you might hear them in the back, sorry about that. But I do have to get this video done, so I went into a private room to get it done. Um, but my uh, thesis or my topic for my paper I put together was um, sexual fluidity in women and um, my actual thesis is that I'm going to be proving is um, sexual fluidity in women is an innate trait and has appeared to become more prevalent due to changes in cultural norms. Um, so just as a start off, the reason why I chose um, this topic was because of actually a class that I also took with Rita a few semesters ago. Um, I, I took uh, Sexuality in Society, I believe it was called, and um, in the book we read, one of the chapters was based on straight girls kissing, and the article blew me away just because it kind of, I, I mean, a part of me was like, oh, this is me at one point so it was basically an eye-opener for my own Kinsey spell change my own sexual identity change over the years and uh, so it came down to choosing a topic and I was like I really want to get into the whole um, sexual fluidity in women just because I find it fascinating how women just have a bigger capacity when it comes to love and when it comes to where they stand sexually um, but to go into my intro of my essay which is my personal story um, my background is um, I was brought up in a heteronormative uh, lens with my family just because I grew up in a Latinx family and in my family it's an automatic, you're straight automatically. If you're a man, you're born a man, you're going to be married to a woman. If you're a woman, you're going to be born to a man, uh, vice versa between the two. And so I was never given the option to say, if you, Miha, if you end up gay, it's okay. I was never, ever given that option or the uh, comfort that it if it comes down to it, it, would, it would be okay so the thing with me though was that even though I thought I was straight for many years I always looked at women in a different light um, than I was brought up to than I was brought up to thinking it was okay so I kept thoughts to myself um, when I would see a beautiful woman or if I thought a woman was attractive and I even remember when High School Musical came out everybody was raving about Zac Efron in the sixth grade and I didn't feel that way toward him. I felt that way towards Vanessa Hudgens, which is the female lead in the movie. And um, so yeah, so for many years I kept the thoughts to myself. I privately looked at women and um, but I never knew it was okay. That's why I kept the thoughts to myself. And also because I really thought I was straight just because of the way I was raised. And um, I finally was brought the opportunity to test those thoughts in um, my junior year of high school and a game of truth or dare a friend, a friend of mine dared me to kiss a girl and even though I had my first boyfriend at the time um, I was open minded to it and I was like hell yeah I'm down and I remember we kissed and I absolutely fell in love with not her but like the act itself the concept of being able to kiss another girl and um, I ended up ultimately learning that that kiss was a part of this, not, not in the way that I'm wording it right now, but I ended up ultimately learning that that kiss was a part of this cultural phenomenon that girl, straight girls kissing is okay publicly. And, it was, and, it was, and that it was encouraged. And I was living. I was like, man, this is so cool. So um, I can ex explore my private thoughts in this way and I'm not going to be judged for it and I was it was amazing to me so for a few years I was living that way I was still continuing to date guys but when it came down to um, drunken episodes being with my friends ha helping friends get out of situations with men um, spin the bottle truth or dare whatever I always always took my opportunity to kiss a girl and um, yeah that's how I was living for a few years until a girl I finally asked me out and I remember I was like <laughs> I wasn't closed off to it um, but I let it be known that it would be my first date with a woman and um, after that I 
and after that first date, I was just like, okay, I now everything is connected. I know what all this means now. I'm into women. I finally solidified that fact with myself when I was 22, going on 23 years old. And um, but bringing it back to that's my personal story, but bringing it back to the thesis of this paper. Um, considering my timeline of where I once was and where I am now, my Kinsey skill changed over three years, my sexuality changed over three years, I'm now more confident in who I am, but I can't help but consider if I would have been here if it wasn't for this whole culture phenomenon of straight girls kissing or it was okay for girls to kiss publicly. The whole epidemic, I, it help, makes me think about it, so that's why I chose this thesis uh, for this paper. Um, so yeah, but going back to um, to review my thesis one more time, sexual fluidity in women is an innate trait and has appeared to become more prevalent due to changes in cultural norms. Um, so as far as my methods of research, I tried um, considering what would help my thesis. First, I considered um, first I considered the article I mentioned, straight girls kissing, which I will be mentioning later in a bit. Um, I also through my research, found out about Lisa Diamond. She's like the total doctor. Uh, that she, this is like, she's like the goddess of this field when it comes to her. She specifically studies uh, sexual fluidity in women, and she even made a whole book about it. She has a bunch of articles, so I, a lot of my research comes from her. But I try to take a step back uh, of like, oh, before her, before her making making groundbreaking work of that. I need to go more back in time. So then I considered Alfred Kinsey, since Alfred Kinsey is, um, of course, everyone knows him as the biologist that um, woke up America's eyes about uh, sexual behavior in America and ultimately around the world, but his studies was around, was specifically in America in the late 1940s, early 1950s. And um, so he studied sexual behavior and normalized it as well, just because at the time, sexuality uh, was just coming from a morality sense, which was, um, you know, no sex before marriage, masturbation is bad, um, just basic sexuality that is okay now or wasn't okay back then. So when people um, had, they had to closet how they really were sexually. And Kinsey studied um, the behaviors he did. He took time off from teaching and, um, he did a study for a few years and he interviewed hundreds to thousands of people. He made a book about males first and that was the initial, when it came down to studies, a lot of the time people did their studies on men specifically. But Kinsey was probably the first one to finally take a look into women. Um, he first did male the, men though because that's, that was a typical go-to thing to do when it came down to studies, but he was the first to finally take a look into women. and. So we did. Re I did a basic um, research of Alfred Kinsey, but before I wanted to also go deep, more deep into time, even before Kinsey, because sexual behaviors um, have been around forever. So I did even more research to go back into time, and I actually did it back into the Libertines, <laughs> and specifically Marquis de Sade. Um, he was a writer that established sexual behavior. So even though his writing was prominently around men, um, he basically established that the behavior existed. So even if it was seen as bad, just because he had his a lot of his work was disturbing at times, but he opened up um, he opened up the world of that eroticism did exist. So. Um, and then also to um, even though it was male centric, he basically established the behavior that sexual fluidity has always been around. Because in Marquis de Sade's work, he mentions, you know, that they were sexual beings in general. Whatever whoever they could have sex with, they would. Whether it was male on male, male on female, male and even some animals. It was his work was pretty uh, gruesome to read, but it was pretty interesting. So. Um, I wanted to go way back into time. I start talking about the Libertines and uh, the Libertine time, specific, but specifically Marquis de Sade, since he established um, sexual fluidity. 
like he basically was the first to broadcast it to the public through his writing. So, and that was back in the 1700s. So we're talking 300 to 400 years ago. Um, and then, so from the, uh, so since, so Marquis de Sade and his general work established the behavior that sexual fluidity has always been around. Kinsey investigated the behavior um, and normalized it as well. And Lisa Diamond, she is the one that did the groundbreaking work of finally analyzing women when it comes to sexual fluidity. So she was very, she's very, a very important figure when it comes to sexual fluidity in women. Um, so when it comes down to Lisa Diamond, um, let's review her definition of sexual fluidity before I continue. Um, let's see. So her, uh, she defines sexual fluidity as situation dependent flexibility in women's sexual responsiveness. So what she means by that is, um, despite whatever, um, age a woman is, life changes that she, that they may go through, um, depending on the situation, it could influence a woman's sexual desire, identity, wherever they may be. So, um, an example that she, um, first mentioned, let's go right here. So, um, everyone knows of Ellen DeGeneres and, um, in 1997, she dated an actress named Anne Hitch and, um, they had a publicized romantic relationship and, um, but the thing is with Anne, she had, she didn't have any prior, um, same sex relationships before. So this was the first time her basically coming out. Um, and even though it ended after two years, she went on to marrying a man. And um, what Lisa Diamond focus is, is that, you know, it's always being said that women go through phases or women are, they're just, be, they're just, women just have a bigger capacity of being able to change where they are sexually and, or just being more open in general. And that's what it breaks down to the article that I mentioned to you guys, Straight Girls Kissing. And that article focuses on basically the college party scene or just the party scene in general, how, um, you know, when girls are out drinking with their friends, how, how come they're more open to kissing other girls, even if they stand hetero heterosexually, I mean, even if they stand, I mean, even if their standpoint of their sexuality is being hetero, they're still open to kissing girls, or, um, so what she, the straight girls kissing, um, the straight girls kissing, sorry, I'm getting a little nervous, um, the straight girls kissing article, they, um, they did some, a lot of research, uh, specifically amongst a specific school, and I'm trying to find it right here. They broke it up into, after doing a lot of research, they broke it up into three categories as to why straight girls kiss. The number one is getting attention. So as far as impressing a man, that's probably like the most direct one. Impressing a man or getting free drinks or just for the attention because they're well aware that two good looking girls kissing is attractive. The second is experimentation slash curiosity, and that goes into the, as I mentioned before, women have a wider capacity of uh, where they stand sexually. So some women are just curious. They see a pretty girl, they had a few drinks in them, and they go for it. And the last one is same-sex desire, and that's actually where I fall into the category when I was reading it, because before women realize where they stand sexually, meaning when they're able to change, um, when they're able to actually change their sexuality, they have to test it out first. So it's kind of related to the second one, but instead of just experimentation, just getting it, you know, just to cross off something off the list, it's to figure out where they stand sexually, and that's why they experiment. So it was kind of like me. I knew that I liked it. And so I seeked out any opportunity that came my way. So that's, that was the third option, same-sex desire. Um, but yeah, just Lisa Diamond goes into a lot of, um, she breaks it down to, you know, three main categories herself as to, 
uh, how women have a wider capacity and and it's more wider than men because also men could be sexually fluid but women Lisa Diamond just proves in her work how, how women are more sexually fluid um, and then lastly too with this um, paper I'm still working on it but um, I've learned a lot and it actually makes me really grateful that I ended up choosing LGBT studies as my minor and that I had to do all this research because it's very interesting to to see the capacity of what how what, what women can contain. So women are, I mean, I, I love women, obviously, but it's great to know that a set, women just have a greater capacity to love and that's just what it comes down to. And um, so I'm very grateful that I chose this topic that I was given this assignment and even so much that I actually did conducted a survey of my own and um, just to gain my own stats and I fell in love with the stats that um, I up to 50 women applied or not applied but up to 50 women participated and um, it was great to see the results like out of the 50 women 72 percent wrote down that despite where they stood sexually they once acted out, not acted out, but they once um, experimented outside of the norm of their sexuality. Seventy-two percent. That's more than half. So, sexual fluidity is real, guys. <laughs> um, and then there was also I I have uh, different results too that I found pretty interesting. Oh, it's not loading. All right, well that's pretty much it. Um, but thank you so much for. Um, watching my video today. I really appreciate it and hope you guys have a good rest of your semester. Thank you so much.